We all live in the digital world. We all need it to be open and safe. We all want to trust. And to be trusted. We all despise control. And desire freedom. We, we are, are all, all united. united. Welcome. On a tout là. Mais je vais quand même aller voir.
Hello, hello everyone. Uh, we will be starting in a minute. Uh, we have people still joining um, online. And a uh, chair of the session, which is connected directly uh, online, should take the floor any minute. I propose that we start uh, now. Welcome everyone to this uh, session, this networking session on researching uh, internet governance. Uh, I hope you can hear me well. Um, uh, my name is Clément Perarno. I am a political scientist based in Brussels, working for the Center for European Policy Studies, STEPS, and uh, an associate researcher at the new uh, VUB school, Brussels uh, School of uh, Governance. Before starting, I would like to sincerely thank uh, Lucien Castex uh, for the uh, invitation to this uh, session, which is uh, indeed uh, very topical uh, and timely. Uh, the session aims at gathering researchers and experts uh, working on internet governance to identify synergies and uh, build collaborations, uh, especially following the successful symposium of the Global Internet Governance uh, Academic Network yesterday. Uh, which is, for those of you who are not familiar with this organization, uh, an international association of academic uh, researchers. And so we would like, uh, following up this symposium, to uh, continue this discussion, these academic uh, discussions around internet governance, but also bring uh, other stakeholders uh, around the table. So basically, this event is aimed to provide first a flash presentation of different research projects, including our own, but also yours, and also promoting um, uh, research uh, around internet governance as part of a wider community, the one of the IGM. Um, so I propose uh, to start um, very rapidly with, um, if it's possible, a brief uh, introduction of the different participants uh, within the within the virtual room, uh, if you want to uh, uh, provide a, a brief explanation of who you are, so that the, the networking uh, connection can can actually start. Um, and then I propose to give the floor to uh, Lucien Castex, uh, Francesca Misiani, as well as Julia Rossi, who are part of the uh, Internet Governance and Regulation Research Group uh, in Paris. Uh, the center within the center internet and society and who are uh, leading a number of uh, very relevant uh, projects related to internet governance and to digital policy so uh, after this uh, brief uh, tour de table i will uh, give them the floor Uh, maybe Francesca, you can take the floor and start uh, the round table. Okay, sounds good. I, I was uh, waiting to see whether we, if we can take the, the floor afterwards, uh, I was going to introduce myself the last, but that's good. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Francesca Muziani. And uh, uh, so as, uh, as Clément mentioned, uh, I am a part of the Centre Internet et Société uh, of uh, CNRS uh, in Paris. Uh, I co-founded it and uh, I am a deputy director of it. Uh, and uh, um, Yes, uh, my research focus uh, is uh, uh, internet infrastructures as the tools of, um, of governance. And uh, currently my, my research project is about uh, uh, internet governance in Russia and the digital resistance to internet governance in Russia. Thank you. Uh, Julien, do you want to be next? Thank you, uh, thank you, Lucien. Uh, thank you also, uh, Clément, for your uh, for your uh, introduction. 
Kindobre, uh, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, so I am uh, Julien Rossi um, from um, the Costec um, uh, Research Unit of the University of Technology of Compiègne. Um, and um, uh, I would like to take this opportunity to say a few words about uh, the, um, the, um, the working group on internet governance and regulation of the um, uh, research group on internet in artificial intelligence and society, uh, which uh, Clément uh, said a few words about. Um, so this group has been set up in 2019, uh, and our aim is to uh, foster research, interdisciplinary research on internet governance in the Francophone area. Uh, so we're particularly interested in uh, any uh, one interested in collaborating uh, with this network, uh, either to present <coughs> research um, done uh, also outside of the Francophone sphere um, to a Francophone public, uh, or if you uh, are interested in uh, in um, helping uh, foster and uh, develop our research on internet governance in the uh, francophone area, then we will be very happy to, to talk with you and, and engage on your different uh, project projects. Uh, unfortunately, I have a, an, an urgent uh, call at 1 p.m. Uh, I hope I will be able to make it as short as possible and join you at the end of this session uh, if you are interested to uh, discuss your, your projects or, and or if you are from uh, the uh, Francophone uh, academia, then uh, uh, I will be very happy to, to talk about your research and see uh, how we can uh, uh, maybe even provide support. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Julien. I'll say just a very few words and then I go around the table. Um, uh, it's an opportunity to speak about all the research projects. So I, I'm uh, first with AFNIC as a representative for public policy and also a researcher at Sorbonne Nouvelle University in Paris, specializing basically in uh, ICT law and innovation law. Uh, we have a number, as Julien and Clément, as well as Francesca said, project uh, within uh, our research group on internet governance and regulation, including on internet resilience and uh, studying uh, new policies being, ena being uh, enabled at the French and uh, European level. Um, and the session is the uh, opportunity to discuss it uh, with a broader community at the IGF and you know, to get uh, your thoughts and obviously improve cooperation. Um, I propose that we go around the table, uh, either uh, on site uh, and virtually. Maybe you want to uh, take the floor and say a few words. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Hi, uh, my name is Ingrid Volkmer. I'm a professor at Melbourne University in Australia, so it's not Francophone area. Uh, I was coming here as I hope we would talk about more international approaches. Uh, however, I'm, of course, interested in the Francophone world. I'm interested in your work, but I fear my own work has to do with global interdependencies. And uh, that's the policy angle we want to develop. I just um, created a new center at Melbourne University. And it's called International Digital Policy Initiative, which brings in policymakers as well as academia hopefully from international organizations. We've just done a big study for the WHO on social media, young generations in 24 countries, which has um, interesting insights also for policy making in a global crisis. So that's the work we are doing. Um, I like to hear more about yours, but unfortunately I don't have any Francophone work to offer to you. So thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you. We're quite open, uh, not only obviously are limited to the French speaking countries, uh, just that we are focusing first of all on, on, on that topic, but we are open to any, any research, obviously. Uh, maybe you want to take, a, to take the floor? Yeah, good afternoon. Uh, I'm uh, Veronica, Veronica Stefan. Uh, I'm actually from Romania, so I could be somewhat in the Francophone zone, but my work is not necessarily related to the region. I work with the Council of Europe, and in the past two years, we have been, let's say, exploring a little bit youth participation in youth governments, but particular AI governance processes. So I think this is a little bit the focus of my work uh, most recently, yeah. but then there are different areas uh, that we work with as well. That's it from my side. 
Thank you. Thank you. Do you do you want to take the floor? Yeah. Hello, my name is Gregory Engels. I am with Pirate Parties International. It's an NGO that is related to Pirate Parties. And um, we organize um, scientific conferences, uh, the Think Twice conference next year in uh, uh, Prague, and um, look into all different um, areas of research around the internet governance. And um, yeah, that's why I'm here. Excellent. Uh, on my right, uh, maybe you want to say a quick uh, presentation, Wood? Uh, hello, my name is João. I work to a cybersecurity company and we are very interested right now in, about the discussions in cooperation and regulations of the cybersecurity market. Thank you, thank you. On my right, just uh, take the floor. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, my name is Savio, I'm from Brazil. Uh, I am uh, not exactly from the, the, the a French speaker, but <laughs> uh, my my research is around uh, is about IoT cybersecurity, uh, more, more more specifically about uh, the vulnerability management uh, for IoT sim systems in, in home networks and and smart cities, and uh, I'm migrating a, a bit in my research focus for probably for my, my future uh, PhD uh, in the sense of uh, uh, supporting the deployment of, of security standards and, and, and uh, best practice uh, <clears throat> for uh, not only the deployment, but uh, understand how to make more uh, uh, standards more suitable to, to being deployed uh, in the both, both part of the, the process. Thank you. Last but not least, you did. Do you want to say what? Hi, Judith Halstein. I'm just listening here. I don't have any research on Francophone countries, but I thought it sounded like an interesting panel. Thank you, Judith. Uh, I propose that we uh, give the floor to our colleagues online. Uh, Clément uh, and Francesca, can you follow up online and uh, take, the, take the lead? Yes, sure. Uh, thank you so much for all the contributions. I can see that we have a very diverse uh, group of, of people in the room. I suppose it is the same in the, in the virtual room. Uh, at some point, I, I saw a hand raised uh, from the IGF Remote Hub of uh, Daka, I suppose. Uh, so, if you want to take the floor, do, do not uh, do not hesitate. Um, if not, uh, if not, uh, you are uh, obviously. If you want to uh, participate, share a bit about your own uh, projects or own profile, uh, please uh, don't do not hesitate to raise your hand or, or take the floor. Oh yes, I, I think we can hear you now. Hello from uh, Bangladesh Remote Hub. Uh, we all connected from Dhaka, Bangladesh, as you can see in video. And thank you so much for give us the platform to joining with you. Many thanks. Thank you very much. Welcome as well uh, to, to, this, uh, to this session. Uh, anyone else? I cannot uh, really pick and choose. So please uh, do not hesitate to raise your hand. Obviously, the communication is more difficult when we are online. So um, I propose if no one wants to uh, share a bit uh, more information about their uh, own research here in the virtual room uh, uh, to follow up with uh, ongoing projects that uh, you would like to, to uh, discuss and to share uh, uh, with, uh, with the wider uh, community of the IGF, so not only uh, uh, researchers and academics, but also uh, the technical or policy making uh, communities. So yeah, I see Shilongo, uh, you can you can take the floor.
Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Christophina Shilongo. I work for a not-for-profit think tank based in Cape Town, South Africa. And um, we work to fill um, the gaps in developing a sustainable information ecosystem and the digital economy, which includes you know, um, advising governments and um, regional as well as continental bodies on regulatory as well as um, yeah, policy strategies. Um, we recently are in the process of completing a study in both um, Francophone Africa and Anglophone Africa, focusing on um, information uh, disorder on the continent and how people are, or how actors, both state and non-state, are responding to the information um, um, disorder. And this includes, um, would like to look at ways that, you know, we can advise the gaps in which states or non-state actors can come in and kind of like come collaboratively come together and tackle the information disorder. So that's our work in uh, Francophone Africa. We have partners all over. And yeah, hoping to you know, share more on this project and any other proceeding um, projects. Many thanks uh, for your contribution. Uh, maybe Francesca, if you want to maybe present brief, very briefly one of the projects of the, the working group that we, we talked about from the Center Internet and Société in Paris. Yes, thank you. <clears throat> thank you very much, uh, Clément. Uh, so uh, I'm actually going to, to speak briefly about uh, two projects, one that is uh, um, about uh, to uh, to end. It will be uh, in June 2022, uh, which is uh, not directly related to the uh, to to our working group, but is nonetheless uh, well uh, fully within its uh, its remit. It's just that the project started before the working group. Uh, so um, this project I'm talking about is uh, um, is called the Resistic. That's its acronym, and uh, it is about uh, how uh, surveillance uh, censorship and uh, broader internet governance uh, dynamics unfold uh, in Russia, especially in the last uh, uh, decade and the last few years where a number of uh, uh, laws have been um, uh, proposed and most of them approved uh, with the idea of reinforcing uh, the digital sovereignty and autonomization uh, of the country. So what we are particularly interested in in this project is to, uh, to look at um, dynamics of uh, critique and the circumvention of these uh, uh, coercitive uh, uh, strategies. And uh, we have uh, several publications by now that have come out of this uh, of this project. And uh, when I stop uh, speaking, I will be sharing a couple of them in um, in the chat if uh, if that's of interest. Uh, and uh, the second project I wanted to briefly uh, touch upon is uh, uh, is um, a project of a report we have uh, ongoing now. Uh, for uh, the panel for the future of science and technology uh, of the European Parliament. So uh, this is um, well a proposal that uh, uh, I received uh, uh, sometime in uh, in 2020. Uh, one actually, no, no, it was it was <laughs> this year already um, from this uh, from this panel uh, to work uh, on a, on a report uh, concerning internet uh, uh, fragmentation and uh, more broadly uh, how uh, protocols and services on the internet are currently ongoing several dynamics of uh, uh, divergence and in some cases convergence that uh, are remodeling how the internet looks. Uh, in terms of uh, interoperability and um, uh, well, the ability of different zones of the internet to actually uh, keep on talking to one another. Uh, and so uh, what we are doing now with uh, uh, Clément, who is, uh, has been doing most of the uh, very, very good work on this for the, for the first part of the project and with uh, Lucien uh, and, uh, and Julien, whom we already met, um, is uh, to, um, um, we have completed a review of what is being said around this uh, uh, much talked about term of internet fragmentation and the related terms, for example, splinternet. Uh, and uh, we are currently speaking to a number of uh, 
uh, experts. Uh, I see at least one in the room, by the way. Hello, Mark. <laughs> Good to see you again. Uh, the, um, who uh, enlightened us on several facets of what the, um, the definition of uh, fragmentation is about for different stakeholders of the internet. And uh, uh, we plan to eventually uh, submit uh, a final report that includes policy recommendations to the European Commission uh, concerning this topic of internet fragmentation. So so uh, if, uh, if you think that this is something that could uh, interest you or uh, yeah, we are very happy to, uh, uh, to talk uh, further. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Francesca. That, uh, that was very clear. And obviously, if you have uh, any, any question about these two particular projects, feel free to, to reach out uh, to us. I see a hand raised physically uh, by Alan uh, Magazine. So if you can uh, unmute yourself, you should be able to, to communicate with us. Uh, we cannot hear you. Um, I think you are, you are still- uh, Am I being audible enough? Can you slide? Right? That's perfect now. It's okay, thank you. Um, I'm Alan Magezi, and uh, I'm joining in from uh, a remote hub here in Uganda. Uh, it's, it's quite a, an interesting discussion we are having right now here in regards to our networking on the internet governance space. Um, the ITU has come up with um, a new coalition, particularly that is partner to connect, and we are looking at uh, four focus points. One of them is uh, building the digital ecosystem, and the other is um, uh, connecting people everywhere. So basically my research is in line with uh, focus point one, which is connecting people everywhere. Uh, we come from the point of view that uh, for us to have uh, an equal and leveled uh, ecosystem, there should be some sort of uh, a streamlined platform and policy uh, for everyone to connect and, and uh, attain content online. So basically the research more looks at uh, how do you connect equally uh, irrespective of where you are. And, and this doesn't limit to, to geographical locations. <laughs> so we are thinking that um, if, if, if I know I'm in one region of, of the globe, uh, someone else on the other side should have connectivity for us to have uh, some kind of uh, full potential from the digital ecosystem. You know, if there's not fully connectivity throughout the globe, then we shall have uh, some sort of a divide in terms of, of how people and economies benefit from uh, the digital ecosystem. So the IT has come up with a new coalition and, uh, and is streamlining, uh, I think by June next year, 2022, uh, a very clear doubt sort of framework will be um, laid out for, for us to, to make sure that we air out that report. And um, I'm thinking by close of June next year, that is 2020, uh, we'll be reporting back a fully uh, documented framework in respect to that research. So coming to this IGF session of networking, it is important for us to, to make sure that uh, we air out these concerns. And I'm actually very um, excited about whoever is putting out their different research we are thinking that digital ecosystem is going to change. And from now on, from this age from Poland, um, we think uh, we will have a different agenda and a narrative in the digital ecosystem. So it's quite a beautiful engagement and we are enjoying it. We are right here joined in Uganda. Um, yes, basically that's what I wanted to say in respect to my personal research. Thank you. And thank you very much. Uh, for your contribution, I think uh, very very useful to better understand your your work uh, on, on on these issues. And if you can uh, start um, more partnerships with your uh, own projects, that would be that would be uh, fantastic. Uh, if you want to share your your contact details uh, with uh, with your with the rest of the group, or like the, if you have a website, do not uh, hesitate to do so so that uh, people can uh, be able to to connect with your uh, with your projects. Uh, I don't see uh, any more uh, hands uh, raised uh, in the virtual room. I don't know if it is the case, if it is the case or not uh, in the in the regular room uh, in Katowice. So, Lucien, do not hesitate to uh, to interrupt me if it is uh, if it is the case. And nothing yet in the room. Uh, but uh, anyone who wants to take the floor, just raise your hand, and I'll 
uh, give you the floor, obviously. Maybe another project that we could mention is the project uh, TIC. Uh, actually, uh, Lucien, uh, since uh, we are here, um, we, you, you might be uh, interested in providing more uh, information about this uh, developing ongoing uh, project around uh, internet governance. So please do not hesitate uh, if you want to take the floor. Uh, I have uh, one floor request uh, uh, in Katowice, just uh, take the floor. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, well, I, I will introduce myself again. My name is Jean Faucon, and one of the research I made in the past few years was about uh, cybersecurity in elections. So we were trying to figure out what is needed for a uh, electronic voting system to be safe and give a transparent result. So if someone wants to discuss that, I am completely open. And one of my research work works are in this field. So I research about uh, what can be done with cryptography and the hardware to ensure a safe electronic voting system. Thank you. Uh, is anyone else in the room uh, want to uh, take the floor? Back to you, Clement and Francesca. Um, so I don't see uh, anyone else. Maybe a, a project that would be, uh, once again, Francesca, if you want to mention a bit, uh, TIG, uh, the, this project around uh, uh, internet governance that uh, we're developing uh, uh, in Paris at the Centre Internet and Society. Yeah, well, I really think that Lucien should because he's the coordinator of it. <laughs> so please, Lucien, do because uh, you are the best person to speak about it. If not, uh, if not, I think Lucia might be uh, interrupted because he has a, a meeting at the same time, so it's possible that he has to, Does to he? leave. The... <laughs> oh my god! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. okay. Well, I mean, I can I can speak about Tigre. I just uh, it doesn't it doesn't work. Okay. Uh, never mind. Uh, okay. So I'll speak about uh, Tigre. So the, the the idea of this particular project is to uh, so it is uh, it is funded by um, uh, a program of uh, the region uh, Ile de France, uh, which is the uh, the region in which uh, Paris uh, is based and which uh, overall hosts. Uh, uh, a good number of uh, uh, universities, big universities in France, as well as uh, um, as well as uh, companies, including uh, uh, well, what we call this, uh, the French tech. Uh, and uh, so the the idea uh, of this uh, of this project was to uh, bring in. Uh, into internet governance um, research. Uh, well, we're not the first that try to do so, but uh, uh, the focus is this also taking into account the type of uh, uh, program that funds it uh, is to uh, give more um, uh, more importance uh, to um, methods uh, of uh, uh, textual uh, analysis uh, and uh, so also including quantitative treatments uh, of, uh, uh, of texts uh, in internet governance, recognizing that there are several uh, communities, uh, first and foremost, uh, uh, the Internet Engineering Task Force, uh, but uh, not only, well, the DIGF also has a good uh, uh, bulk of information that is a uh, conversation information that is uh, uh, in uh, mailing lists, for example, or fora. And so there are communities of internet governance that have really become structured uh, around the ability to uh, to exchange uh, messages in asynchronous manners and uh, have built up um, important uh, um, 
uh, yes, uh, quantities of, of text. So the, the idea is to uh, uh, be able to leverage uh, these, uh, uh, these quite big uh, uh, empirical material uh, in, a, in a quantitative manner uh, to, uh, uh, to understand better how, uh, how these fora help uh, structure uh, the particular uh, ethos and uh, uh, communities, I guess, around, uh, around internal governance. So uh, we, we haven't really started this, uh, this particular work, but uh, uh, we um, we are, uh, we are most of uh, of this project should happen in uh, uh, over the course of uh, 2022, and so uh, it it will always be like this. Uh, our small group that is uh, uh, involved in it with the support of the working group on internet governance in uh, uh, in Paris. And uh, being here, <laughs> given that this uh, uh, this session is called the researching internet governance, uh, uh, I uh, I take the opportunity to uh, mention uh, an edited volume that has exactly the same title, uh, which is focused uh, on uh, on methods and uh, and theories of uh, of internet governance. Clément has just uh, shared the link. Thank you so much, Clément. Uh, it is an edited book that came out uh, last year uh, with MIT Press and uh, which I co-edited with uh, uh, a trio of colleagues. Uh, uh, well, you may, may be familiar, most of you will be familiar with, uh, with their names, uh, Laura Denardis, uh, Nanette Levinson and uh, Derek Coburn. Uh, and uh, our idea here was to really take internet governance research as a research subject in itself. That's the, the punchline we devised for this uh, uh, for this book. So with the idea to really focus on uh, uh, the different sorts of methodologies that can be uh, leveraged to study internet governance and also what are the main uh, theoretical paradigms uh, that, uh, well, from the first uh, perspectives in uh, uh, international law, international relations, uh, regime theory, and so on, have moved on to include a, uh, a larger number of disciplines and, uh, and approaches to study internet governance. There you go. I think it's, uh, I think that's it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Francesca. Yes, uh, the the book, uh, your, the link to the book can be found uh, in the in the chat. Uh, it's open access, so you, you should be able to to read it where, wherever you are. Uh, and I, I found it uh, very uh, very rich uh, and super interesting for people uh, interested in uh, internet governance uh, researchers. So uh, do not hesitate to to have a look. Um, any. Any other uh, intervention when it comes to your research project, but it could also be about uh, the challenges that you face when uh, trying to study uh, intergovernance uh, processes or actors, uh, since we have a very diverse uh, room uh, in terms of the stakeholders uh, involved. Uh, I'm sure that uh, if you uh, if you are looking to engage with the IETF uh, with obviously the Internet Governance Forum Secretariat or all the actors, uh, I think that would be a good venue for you to, uh, to uh, express your uh, research interests uh, and the different uh, avenues that you would like to follow in terms of uh, research. So do not hesitate to raise your hand. And once again, I cannot see in, in, the, in, the, in the room in Katowice, so I will rely on only. Yeah, uh, I have somebody asking for the floor. Uh, I'll leave the room for a minute and <laughs> come back. Uh, please have the floor. Thank you very much. Uh, as uh, as Clement mentioned, the IETF. Uh, I would ask us to to share a, a bit more about my project uh, in uh, securing uh, home IoT and the vulnerability management. I have now one active uh, draft. I have uh, submitted it like I think that fifteen years ago. Uh, and it, it's now in under discussion in, in the IOTOPS working group, the IoT operations working group. So if anyone uh, is interested on it, uh, the project name is INXU, I-N-X-U, X-U. Uh, so you can uh, check it there. Uh, make some criticism. I have also some some uh, papers uh, published, so you can try to to uh, find by the same name. 
and you you will find it but basic, basically it has a uh, a a data model for for sharing information about malicious activities as uh, well known attacks as uh, a uh, malware variant uh, and all the the, the malicious uh, activities that targets uh, IoT systems, and then uh, we can uh, uh, use this data model, for example, for sharing uh, this information to other stakeholders, uh, and then uh, block these ma malicious activities in in multiple networks at at the same time. Uh, so, just sharing a bit more about the, the, my project, and uh, that's all for now. Thank you. Thank you thanks. very much. Thank you thanks, very much. Uh, thanks a lot. That was quite uh, interesting. The, the, the aim of the session is really to share uh, about your projects, to react on project of other colleagues. And uh, thank you, Francesca, for presenting the Tiger project. I mean, it's Tigre in French, but I mean, you know, it's mean, in, it means Tiger. So we are quite hopefully uh, convinced that we'll, it will lead some, somewhere great. Uh, so don't hesitate to take the floor. This is a networking session. Uh, back to you, uh, Clément. Yes, many thanks, Lucien. And I see uh, that uh, Nadia uh, raised her hand. So please feel free to take the floor. Nadia. Thank you very much. And thank you very much for the opportunity to share a little bit um, about my work, but also to listen what all of you have been working on. And it would be great to see um, whether or not we can um, collaborate and see what kind of information and resources we have access to and available. Because I think with uh, internet governance research, access, especially when we talk about privacy, access to data and things like that, understanding these and having access to this can be com complicated and um, reaching out to all the different communities to collaborate together would be a wonderful opportunity. I would love to share a little bit about uh, the paper uh, that I presented yesterday at uh, GigaNet, the academic symposium of the Internet Governance Forum. And um, I've been developing this project over the last couple of years where I'm looking at stakeholders in internet governance. So we always talk about uh, multi-stakeholderism, the stakeholders in the internet governance, and then we say they're civil society, private sector, government, inter, um, uh, intergovernment organizations. And then sometimes we include academic and technical community from the Tunis agenda. And sometimes we include end users, but who are they actually? And, and, and how, how do they kind of, uh, move within these spheres within internet governance. So um, I used the public data from the Internet Governance Forum and I looked at how people self-identified themselves at the Internet Governance Forum, but also I designed a codebook of the types of stakeholders that are coming to the Internet Governance Forum, so, such as there are policemen at the Internet Governance Forum, there are mayors that are coming to the Internet Governance Forum, there are engineers. So I have an entire list of the, the different types of people that are coming in that's compiled together. And then I compared them to see how people self-identifying themselves. So for example, is a mayor government because he is paid by public money or is, is the mayor actually a civil society because he represents the people? So we have questions like that, that we wanted to present to people where do people then fit in when we are talking about bringing stakeholders in the room? And we found that there were some discrepancies. For example, um, some universities define themselves as private sector, but should they be academia or civil society? Um, is then police civil society or something else? We found there's intersecting stakeholders, for example, social entrepreneurs, people who are private sector, but they're not actually solely for profit. The sole purpose of their mission is to do something for the community. So we have to then also make sure that people don't fall in between the gaps. So then when we, um, so what the aim and purpose is, is then of our research is to provide the wider community uh, who is working on policy making, but also the MAG, um, to support them to work on informed decision making when you're making decisions for stakeholders that you have the the information of the people that are coming to the uh, internet governance forum but also when we start thinking about stakeholders how do we think about them one of the uh, graphs that we designed actually was how many newbies are there every year 
Um, and we always say, oh, the Internet Governance Forum, it's always the same people. But we actually found out that 60% every year are new people that are coming to the Internet Governance Forum. And 40% are people who are returning Internet Governance people. But the amount of people are, is rising. So the amount of people attending every year is rising. So there's increasingly more newbies and there are increasingly more people returning. And then my question then to the MAG is, how are we going to make sure that the people who are not returning, how can we keep them engaged? How can we return them? This is not uh, a policy that I am then proposing uh, to, to find an answer to, but it's something that uh, our information is then trying to bring back. Another thing that we looked at was double hats. So um, I am a PhD fellow at the United Nations University, Chris, and the Free University of Brussels. Um, but I also uh, work for Eurodig and I sit on the board for Eurit. So you see a uh, United Nations University is an IGO, the VUB is, an, is academia, which is civil society, then you have Eurodic, which is civil society, and then you have Eurid, which is, then is technical com community. So I'm wearing these double hats, and I'm not the only one. How many people in this room are member of ICANN and the IETF, but have a job or are part of civil society? So we then look at people who registered double hats to acknowledge that these people are also in the room, um, and that, um, that, that there are many interests are going around at the same time. And what we also found interesting is looking at stakeholder mobility. So where stakeholders moving from um, one job to another, but not only that, when stakeholders move from one stakeholder group to another stakeholder group. So I used to work for civil society and then I started working, that's not true. I started working for private sector. Then I was now work for civil society and then these people are uh, moving around and it's very interesting to see how that is forming at the IGF and um, how we are then being um, um, acknowledging all this, this mobility, this fluidity that exists, how we are exchanging information with each other. Um, and that's um, something that my work is uh, looking forward to, um, to further develop, to see um, how can we support uh, decision makers to make sure that the right stakeholders sit at the table and that we haven't forgotten people um, who, who have been falling in between these gaps because they don't fit in a particular stakeholder group or because their stakeholder group doesn't exist on a form. So um, if you had uh, any interest in this and uh, wanted to share your thoughts and ideas, or if there was a, an idea in your head like, oh, um, I saw this at the IGF. Is that really true or is that really the case? I'm happy to look more into that and see if the data kind of reflects on that. That's amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Nadia, for not only presenting very well your, your research uh, uh, article from uh, yesterday's uh, GigaNet. Actually, I put the link uh, in the chat for those of you who uh, are attending this event uh, online, so you can have uh, normally access to the to the paper and all the other papers that were uh, presented yesterday. And uh, yeah, obviously, uh, once again, if you want to to share your your page, so that if people want to uh, want to contact with you, they will be able to they will be able to do so. But thank you so much for for your the, the great insights into deconstructing what we mean by multi stakeholder model and who are the actors that are actually in the rooms. So I find it. Very fascinating. Um, I don't know uh, whether there are other uh, intervention that uh, could be made. Uh, maybe Lucien, once again. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you for your presentation. That was quite interesting. You are speaking to a member of the MAC, so we we had <laughs> discussions about that. You know, stakeholders groups and multiple ads. Uh, that's quite uh, that's quite interesting. I have um, uh, one. Uh, Take the floor. <laughs> thank you. Uh, oh, thank you. Uh, okay, thank you very much again. Uh, uh, that's me again. I think that I, I'm having like um, half part of the time of this session. But okay, yeah. Uh, I, I would. I will, would. I just would like to to uh, say thank you, Nadia, for your contribution. Uh, one part of your of your uh, comments uh, caught me my uh, my attention. Uh, that is related about the, the newcomers and, and the people uh, who stay and keep working uh, in, in the IGF and the, the general internet governance uh, uh, forums and activities. Uh, and more specifically, I, I um, uh, this is not like 
a research interest for me now, but I, I think that I'm going to take a look at your work more specific, more specifically uh, in the, my interest is more in, in the, the technical field, the technical community uh, that uh, they have like the, the, the uh, LACNIC, the, the, the NANOG, the, the regional uh, technical communities, but not the broader internet community. Uh, internet governance community are, are, are well engaged. Uh, and this is uh, actually a topic that I'm interested on. So I'm, I'm going to take a look at, at your work and try to fig figure something out uh, to maybe support this in the Brazilian community, maybe in the youth Brazil community in Brazil. Thank you. If you don't mind me uh, responding, Clement. Uh, thank you so much for your comment. I would be really interested to see what kind of feedback you have. At the moment, we're not really looking at geography because um, we are trying to define geography, especially when we're talking with people who have double hats. It's then difficult uh, to kind of assess um, if we decided, for example, that um, their organization, their headquarters is in one country, but they themselves reside in a different country. Um, or if, and, and you have double hats and then you have two organizations in two different countries. Um, we then have a, a little bit of a question, where do you then belong to? So uh, when we then think, of, for example, about ICANN, um, many people in ICANN all over the world um, representing many different communities, but ICANN is based you know, in the United States. So then everybody in ICANN is automatically then assigned the USA. Is that a fair acknowledgement of their geography? Or do we then look at every individual single person and find out where did they live at the time that they're living in. And for example, I'm Dutch, but I'm living in Belgium. Um, so do I then represent Belgium as a country or do I represent Dutch because of, of how I self-identify of my nationality? So there are some questions that I have regarding geography, which, so we haven't very much um, gone into that type of depth, but these are definitely questions that I would love to have discussions about, about how people would feel um, about their, uh, their you know, participation and representation at the IGF. Thank Just, you. Thank you. I have somebody else uh, uh, requesting the floor, please. Hi again. Uh, so I'm Veronica. I was mentioning that I do work with Council of Europe and generally my focus because uh, stakeholders was mentioned is on youth participation in different processes. And actually, when we are doing the research and mapping, either in the Council of Europe or uh, even uh, in Europe and uh, Central Asia, the question is, first of all, <laughs> that, again, we look at civil society. And actually, we are referring to different processes. So first of all, I wouldn't say internet IGFs are the spaces where we do the internet governance, but where we discuss about the internet governance. But otherwise, identifying what are the spaces for internet governance, it's a challenge so far. Uh, then looking what is meaningful involvement in these kind of processes is a second level that we are looking at. And then looking at inside of the different stakeholders is quite a challenge to separate who is part of civil society. Specifically because when we were researching youth involvement, we were referring to organized youth or at least loosely organized youth communities. So not general individuals or even youth experts in the field. The issue here is whoever is uh, working on this and whoever wants to work in this, we can also look at these very specific issues because it's not you know, general involvement in IGF or uh, whatever other processes, because I don't think these processes are at all relevant for shaping the internet. I think we can take this uh, discussion a little bit better. Uh, on AI governance in particular, where we are looking, there are so many spaces and it's so much confusion <laughs> of who is doing what and putting youth lenses in this, it's just making it chaotic, but I think it's high time. We also look fast into these processes. So we make sure there is the space. So understanding the space, but also making sure there is space to do that now when uh, some decisions are taken. That was just more of a reflection from my side, but. Again, uh, I'm really working on this and really interested in continuing working on this with you guys. Thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, we have uh, an intervention from uh, Francesca again, and I see the time is passing. So we will soon uh, conclude the session, I think. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> It was just to follow up uh, for two minutes about this uh, having multiple hats thing, because <clears throat> One of the things that I'm trying to do in, my, in currently while I'm preparing my 
habilitation to direct research, which is the one thing that in France we need to do in order to be able to direct my PhD thesis, but uh, accessory. <laughs> it, it is also a, a way to reflect upon, uh, well, a number of uh, years of research that we, uh, we have done up to that point. Uh, I am reflecting quite a bit uh, on how uh, researchers are uh, kind of co-shaping the field itself of internet governance by oftentimes holding this uh, these uh, these multiple uh, multiple hats and uh, uh, i just wanted to bring forward another element that i think we should be uh, attentive about which is uh, uh, when uh, institutions uh, ask us to uh, to be part of uh, advisory uh, boards or uh, uh, reflection uh, committees uh, and so on uh, to what extent uh, uh, are we um, just providing our research input and to, to what extent uh, we may be uh, also uh, not used, but in some way uh, we may be uh, asked to be involved uh, because of particular uh, power balances and in particular uh, an attempt to provide legitimacy to specific uh, legislative initiatives, for example, uh, or, or some. I mean, I think that uh, given that there are more and more of these situations in which uh, we are being asked to provide expertise in several uh, scenarios, we should uh, be mindful of this aspect because uh, uh, th there are also these kinds of, uh, of dynamics uh, taking place and this should not prevent us from uh, providing constructive input whenever we are being asked for it, but uh, uh, just uh, let us be reflexive uh, in, the, in the first place on uh, what our our own role is in uh, in this kind of let us be our own sociologists so to speak in internet governance bodies at times it's useful thank you uh, francesca i have one request for the floor in the room and maybe uh, julien which is back in the room also might want to add a few words please Oh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Nadia, for your presentation. And actually, I am an example of your multiple hats, because the first time I went to IGF, I was representing civil society. The second, I was academia, and now I am private sector. So how to deal with that? And I think it's very important to, to check this the trajectory of these people, like how they are interacting and, the, and to see the continuous work between these sectors and how they develop and talk to each other. So I think about this timeline perspective, what are you focusing on, on the research? With, on the research. Thank you. Thanks for your question. So the data that we looked at was from 2006 and 2019 um, in-person meetings. Uh, the reason at the time is because it was the most complete set. Not all years at the time had uh, remote participation um, data uh, available and we weren't entirely sure remote participation meant people signing up or actually attending. Um, so uh, those were questions that we wouldn't have needed to ask the IGF Secretariat, but we kind of just thought this is already plenty of data, so we're going to start here. And now with the last two years with everything going online, there is uh, different scopes available. So there is definitely opportunities to, to start looking into kind of also um, online access. But for so far, we have been focusing primarily on on-site to also uh, questions we had at the time uh, when we start thinking about is, um, you know, were people uh, not coming back because of where it was in Europe uh, or because it was in, in, in particular areas of um, the, the world, but we found that um, actually uh, sessions that were outside of Europe were where people, where there was a large amount of people coming back and then the last uh, few years that, that were held in Europe, so um, that was Geneva, France and then Berlin, uh, the amount of people that kind of were returning was not any more than significantly, uh, it was actually a little bit less in comparison to other times. So um, returning rates in that regards were still around 40%. So um, this, that kind of gives us a little bit of an insight uh, to um, what attracts people to come to a physical IGF. But um, we're looking forward to having more people asking questions like yours. So we can look at the data, what kind of answers we can get. 
Thanks, uh, thanks a lot. Uh, I propose to give the floor to Julien, which is back in the room, maybe a, a reaction, a few words. Uh, thank you, Lucien. However, I, I don't know if I can say much because unfortunately I had to leave for much of this uh, meeting. Uh, however, uh, once again, thank you very much for everyone to have joined us and it's now <laughs> time is even up. Uh, I think uh, hopefully we can also continue discussing things uh, more informally. Uh, I think that Lucien has a booth set up uh, in the village that can be perfectly useful for that if you wish to continue discussing, researching and and uh, and uh, talking about our different projects. Thank you very much. Thank you. All.